connecting to the cloud service. Hey, you guys, this is Earl Jones, your insurance agent and mortgage officer, right? And I have with me today the illustrious David. How do you pronounce your last name now? Motakaitis. Motakaitis. Yep. David Motakaitis, who I'm going to let him continue the introduction because, you know, bless America. Um, what I specialize in is um, HR benefits. We'll help your company um, organize their HR issues and, and increase their health benefits. And in the entire process, we'll um, decrease your premiums by 10 to 20%. Okay, got it. And then just so that you guys know, I also have Suzanne Hood, who is a realtor with Century Realty down in the Santa Cruz area, correct, Suzanne? Century 21 Showcase, we have offices in Boulder Creek and Scotts Valley. Thank you, Earl. Yes, yes. And then I also have the best headshot photographer in all of the Bay Area, Dean Brenny. But I, Dean, can you unmute yourself and give a quick introduction about who you are, what you do? Well, yes, I can. Hi, Earl. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, great. Well, I am a uh, headshot photographer. I uh, own personal headshot, professional headshots Palo Alto. I create spectacular headshots of uh, professionals and executives uh, here in my studio on Fabian Way, which I am currently painting. Uh, and I, um, I've been doing this for, um, I've been doing photography for about 28 years now. I'm starting to get the hang of it and having a really good time. Awesome. So Suzanne and Dean, Thank you guys for joining. I'm going to mute you so that way David and I can have a banter back and forth. And then when I unmute you, that's when I'm trying to get you to like ask questions because I know you're gonna have questions, okay? Okay, just make sure you ask me, I'm, as I said, I'm thinking, so. Oh, okay, got it, cool. Yeah. All right, so David, in light of the current coronavirus, Thing and businesses are shut down, right? Like from the point of view of an HR and let's just start with HR. How, what can a business owner do during this time frame to keep, you know, things HR compliant, HR simple to support their, their employees as they're, you know, locked down? Well, what they need to do currently is they have to update their employees handbook. Because no one, well, some people might, but no one had um, inside their handbooks things to deal with viruses. And it needs to be general. You can't do the coronavirus, right? But, but it has to be general guidelines in there to protect the company and to protect the employees. So when an epidemic happens, right, there are guidelines to follow. Because one of the problems we're having throughout the entire nation, there are no guidelines set for, for situations like this. So... Right now is a perfect time to update the employee's handbook and then have the employees sign those addendums so everybody is on the same page and they know what to expect from the company. Mm. I, would, <laughs> I would say your dogs agree with that recommendation. Now, once they've gotten the handbooks updated, how does this virus impact their medical premiums? Do you, can you talk to that? Like, what are you, like, or am I making sense at all? Well, depending on what coverage they have, their premiums are going to cover whatever virus that they have, right? Because it's classified as a disease. Um, in case it's a high deductible plan, um, they'll have to come up with more money out of pocket. If not, it, it just depends on what stage they are. Um, the, the carriers have lots of money to pay for all the coverage that is currently getting offered. The problem is the capacity at the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So um, people just have to relax. Um, the other great thing is most people don't understand how their um, insurance works. And one of the great things is if you go with Blue Cross, Kaiser, United, is you have to do the telemedicine. You can actually do exactly what we're doing, Earl. Right, you can call up a doctor, right, and you do telemedicine, so they can actually walk you through to see what issues you have. Do you really have a virus, or is it a common cold? Whatever your situation is, so telemedicine is, I believe it or not, has been great in the last few days. 
right? Because no one ever usually used that. And that would save also the employee a ton of money because usually telemedicine is free. Got it. So when we say tele telemedicine, you and I are using Zoom right now, right? But mm -hmm. are, can, can telemedicine be done simply by doing FaceTime? Yep. So what happens is if you're on Blue Shield or Kaiser, there's an app for it. And when you're calling up, you're actually talking to a real nurse or a real doctor, depending on what expectations that you, you that's needed. Got it. And so when people get back, so when people, when this is finally over, right, what's the, besides updating their handbook, what do you think employers are going to have to do once this is over and we're like back to work as it relates to benefits and HR? Well, remember, people go to work for um, paychecks, benefits, and to save money. So, so what happens is with the benefit part, they just have to reassure their employees that everything is still um, working 100%. So it's just everyone's running panic, and we just have to solve, just control the panic level that everything's okay. Okay. Got it. Now I'm going to, Suzanne and Dean, I'm going to open this up because we've talked a little bit and I want to know if you guys have any questions. I do not have any questions at this time. Okay. Suzanne, I'm trying Remember, to... My, my, situation is different than, my situation is different than most other people since I'm self-employed. Mm -hmm. I don't have employees. Ask is this going to be focused on employee benefits? Um, it's going to be focused on employee benefits for a little bit, and then I'm going to go into some workers' comp, and then I'm going to share some information that I got from my business coach in regards to um, SBA loans that are being made available for businesses that are impacted by the virus. Cool, cool. I will probably have questions at the SBA point. Okay, perfect. Suzanne, what about you? I have I have no questions at this particular time, and um, I'm looking forward to more of the conversation. Okay, awesome. So, um, real quick, David. Now, I know that you have your part of an HR services. Can you provide the, the audience like a high level overview of that HR services and how can that HR services help in this situation that we're currently facing or any type of crisis situation or just day to day normal operations? What happens that we have on staff is a, a certified um, senior professional HR person. A lot of times your HR um, person inside your company. It's a part-time job for them because they do multitask and they go to the internet and they look up certain solutions. And sometimes they're finding the wrong solutions. What they actually should do is be reaching out to a professional that can guide them to the correct answer. It's like in case someone goes on the internet and they look up, they have a cough and they think they're gonna die in two days, right? But if they talk to a real doctor, the doctor will guide them and go, listen, just relax and you have to be looking for this solution over here. So mm -hmm. some of the part-time HR people actually need to reach out, get professional help, so uh -huh. we'll guide them down the right path, and they won't start dreaming of dragons. Oh, got it. But now your service, now you're part of an HR service, correct? Correct, and we have our own HR software, too. So that HR software could that help? A small, a small business owner be better in compliance with HR guidelines here in the Bay Area? Because, you know, California, yes. we have our own little, you know, world. You, you, have, you have access to an online library that's updated every day for any new compliance laws that are, are, are relevant for your company. Um, the database it would be the same da database that our HR person will go to for that information. Um, you just need help to how to guide to that database because there's a lot of information on that. Thousands and thousands of pages. Thousands and thousands of pages. And so, but let, let's just flip, to, let's flip the coin. So let's say you have a client uh, company that has, let's say 20 employees, they have a full-time HR person, and now the virus has, you know, caused the impact that it's caused. How can what you do 
make that HR department's job easier to manage this crisis? To help manage? Um, to help, sorry about the dogs. To, to help manage the crisis, what will happen is, again, we'd have to set up guidelines inside the company, how they're gonna deal with their employees. Are they gonna pay for their employees? Are they giving them sick leave? Are they gonna be um, doing mandatory time off with no PTO, right? So, so those are the guidelines and each company's gonna be different depending on their cash flow, depending on how much their business is impacted. Some businesses are closed for three weeks to four weeks. Those people are sent home right, with no PTO, they cannot cash in any PTO or time off. So they have to actually go in to the labor board and file for unemployment. So those are the guidelines that we need to help set up because the employees need a paycheck. Yes, they do need a paycheck. Yes, yes they do. Um, I just, you just brought up a, a very good point and I wanna segue into this. Um, my coach, I, um, sent me over, and I'm going to share this screen with you guys so that you can see this. Hold on. Share screen. Let me know when you guys can see where it says economic injury dis disaster. Got it. Got it. Okay. So uh, my b business coach sent me over this from the U.S. Small Business Administration. Um, whatever that virus is called, child. Coronavirus, small business corona. guy. Think yeah. of a Corona beer. No, no, we shall not associate Corona with this because Corona and Lyme always taste better. Yes. But have, anyway. you have a little side of Lyme disease with your coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute, Susan. Very cute, Suzanne. Susan. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so it looks like that the SBA is, has come out or is working to come out with um, a program to help small businesses with loan resources. And I'll share this link with people after we, you know, once we post this video. Um, small businesses are encouraged to do their part to keep their employees and customers safe and healthy, of course. So there is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program um, work with the state governors, provide targeted low interest loans. That's one. Looks like working capital up to $2 million. And then there's the link for that. Should we click that link? Hold on, we'll go back to that. Um, and then here's some guidance for the businesses, employers. You know, of course, the 15 day to slow the spread, interim guidance for business employer to plan and respond to the coronavirus. Preventing stigma related to now, this is different. So this came from Capital Access. Wow. Wow, this is good. Okay, let's go up, go up here. Let's click that. Disaster assistance. So here's where you can apply for assistance. Uh, low interest disaster loan to help business and homeowners reclaim from declared disasters. So the coronavirus. So I'll share this link so that people can go through this and learn. And, you know, it looks like there's already some information that's already been put out there. Wow. Low disaster assistance in form of low interest loan to business renters and homeowners located in regions affected by a declared disaster. Would we say that, you know, the Bay Area is a declared disaster because of this loan? That is true. We're considered one of the hot spots. We are considered one of the hot spots. Well, Santa Clara County is considered a hot spot. Santa Cruz, I don't know. Well, we're on mandatory lockdown, so just like everybody else in the state. So, you know, essentially we're all in a disaster zone because the president has declared it an emergency. This is true. So I'm definitely going to share this link with everybody. Um, that's one thing I'm definitely going to share. And then to piggyback on what you've been sharing, David, you know, 
this also brings in workers comp um, with business owners as well. Um, I have no idea how it's going to play out um, with this if a person says that they got sick, you know, because they were at work. I have no idea. But what I do know as an insurance agent is that it's imperative that business owners follow the mandates as issued by the federal government uh, because the insurance industry is monitoring this, you know, around the clock, minute by minute by minute. So if you are in an, if an employee is in a situation where they have to work, they need to do everything in their power to keep themselves healthy. So I'm going to recommend lots and lots of hydration, like water, tea, no sodas. All those sodas do taste good. I will confess, they do. Um, plenty of rest, exercise. Just you know, just to stick to the stick to the plan, right? Just stick to the plan. Um, other than that, what I'm trying to think, there was one other question I had for you, David, and I just forgot it. Oh, when a company gets back, to, when we get back to normal, um, should they, should the company then pull out their health insurance plans and review those plans to make sure that they are equipped for something like this, if it should ever happen again? Like, what should a company do when it comes to their health benefits? Well, what happens is a lot of small businesses currently are relatively cash rich right now. But what is going to happen in 60, 90, and 120 days uh, going into this, it's all going to have financial impact. So <clears throat> this will be a great time to review their policy because their, their health benefits and their HR actually needs to have a quick overhaul right, to protect everyone at the company because everyone works for the company. So we gotta make sure the company will survive. So we gotta actually look and update everything they have and make sure that small business stays intact. Great. Uh, and that's the biggest thing we can do to keep their economy um, stable, right? Is, is, is it because the health benefits and the HR is like a big portion, a big fixed portion of their expenses, or is that just because it's a constant fluctuating thing? Um, their benefits is one of their, um, well, the HR, including the employees and the health benefits, that is one of the major costs per the company, right? And, and they gotta make sure they take care of their costs because it's just a straight cost. So if we can um, streamline their costs to protect their overhead, that will help solidify the company. Mm, good, because I know at Farmers, we have a workers' comp program that attaches to various payroll processes, right, so that we can do what's called real-time workers' comp, so that they're not guessing at how much to put ahead, you know, to pay for workers' comp, um, but it allows them to, like, integrate, let's say, like, QuickBooks if they do their own payroll, right? and then we just build them for the actual payroll for the workers' comp fees. So that might be another way to help them to minimize their cost as much as possible while trying to rebound from this um, situation that we're currently in. Or your workers' comp is gonna flex depending on payroll? Correct. Okay, your, 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 your premiums and your um, payroll costs are gonna, are gonna be more stable. Right, because those, those are fixed costs. Um, if your employees are working part time or full time, that's still a fixed cost for payroll. Um, in case the full time for health benefits and ancillary products, that's still a fixed cost. So whether they're working a lot or a little, those costs are still hard costs. They will not vary. Not like in workers' comp. Hmm. Repeat that one more time. Not like workers' comp. Yeah, okay, workers' comp flex is depending on payroll. So if, if payroll is $20,000 this pay period and $5,000 next pay period, it's gonna um, flex the, the amount of money they're gonna pay for workers comp. In case, the employee, in case the employees are not working as much and they're still classified as full time and they're on payroll, the payroll company is gonna charge the same amount of money. Your, your cost for your HR, right, is gonna cost per head, that's gonna be a fixed cost. The cost for benefits and ancillary product, 
is a fixed cost that does not flex. Got it. So which is why I recommend it, like they review their workers' comp policies um, and try to find a solution that allows them to pay in real time. Because typically workers' comp is paid ahead. So if I anticipate that my sal my labor cost, my my staff labor cost is like three hundred thousand dollars, then I'm calculated to pay workers' comp at three hundred thousand. But if I could get my workers comp pay it with a process that's real time, and let's say I actually only pay 250 in salaries, then I'm only getting charged for the 250 at salaries. Where people can wind up getting you know, caught is when the classifications of their employees, when it's time for an audit, if the company's made changes and they didn't communicate that to the insurance company and all that other stuff, can't count for that. But what I can recommend to help people going forward is that at the time of renewal is that they look for options to be a little bit more real time in terms of workers comp costs because that way they're not guessing too much in advance and it frees up cash now versus waiting for an audit and then find out that they paid too little or too much does that make sense that makes perfect sense okay Good. We've talked a lot. Suzanne, do you have any questions? Does any of this make sense? It all makes sense. And I'm really grateful to know about this SBA um, emergency loan for disasters. Uh, somebody else was posting on Facebook earlier today, another self-employed woman, mm -hmm. that um, there is no, you know, the, the people who actually work will have unemployment to fall back on and we have nothing. Um, so she was actually proposing that we, you know, bombard our government officials and say, hey, look, um, you know, we're small business owners. We're, we're basically the backbone of the country and we don't have any coverage for an emergency like this. We're just kind of out of luck. So this at least provides some kind of recourse for all of us who are self-employed. Yes, it does. And I've been seeing on um, some banks are also saying too, like if you're having difficulty, you know, give them a phone call and to let them know. Um, I know that farmers insurance, I just post on Facebook that if people are having trouble uh, paying their insurance, that they should call the 800 number and talk to, you know, farmers and see what can be done to assist them. I think it's just a matter now of helping to get the word out about what's available um, so that people can, you know, take appropriate actions. And so, I'll, again, I'll share this link with everybody. And then when I post this video, that link, this link will be available. Dean, is there anything that you have a question about? Anything that makes sense for you? Does it make sense? Okay, cool. He's painting. He is painting, yes. All right, you guys. Well, I appreciate Suzanne and Dean for showing up and being support, right, being our audience. And David, I also appreciate you um, for helping me to put this together because I, I want to try to to get some positive information out that people can use to help them navigate through this this thing called a labyrinth, right? This crazy maze that we are in. Um, David, how can people get in touch with you if they want to talk to you about, you know, your the HR benefits and about reevaluating their medical programs, that the benefit programs that they have? Um, they can email me at david at motech, M-O-T-E-K, insurance.com. Or the easiest is to call my cell phone, 408 Four six zero seven nine nine zero. Are you licensed all over the country or just in California? I'm licensed in 14 different states. Ooh. I'm drinking tea just in case you guys want to know. This is like a very... No soup? Huh? No soup? No, no soup, no soup. This is tea. Um, this is tea. Hydration, 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 hydration. All right, you guys, I am going to stop sharing my screen. 
And then with that being said, I greatly appreciate all of you for coming. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.